the circumstantial evidence suggested to me almost two decades ago that that's what it was. Because I got led to the study of the Missoula floods through the study of the Carolina Bays. Because I theorized that with the Carolina Bays, if it was a multiple fragmentation event coming from the northwest, and it occurred 12 to 13,000 years ago or towards the end of the Pleistocene, it then occurred during the Ice Age. Well, if you follow the incoming path 45 degrees northwest, if it was a multiple fragmentation event of, of an extraterrestrial object, then it means it, it had to have passed over the ice sheet if it did it during the late part of the ice age. The ice sheet was there, it came from the northwest, it would have passed over Canada. So indirectly then I began to look for evidence that such a thing may have happened. So the question that I framed in my mind was if there was a multiple fragmentation event that led to the formation of the Carolina Bays, is there any evidence of unusual effects during the glacial during the deglaciation period. So then I began to look into that and then whoa, there it was. I mean, from all across the southern margin of the ice sheet, the evidence was coming in that there had been these gigantic catastrophic floods coming off the ice sheet. You know, I mean literally in, you know, that could only be measured in millions and hundreds of millions of cubic feet per second with the most spectacular ones of course being the Missoula flood in the northwest but documented all the way along. There was gigantic floods that came down the Mississippi River. Gigantic, huge floods. There were massive floods that came down and swept over the Dakotas and Montana. I mean, those complete states were probably almost underwater temporarily, like an inland sea just moving across North America. And I'm going to show you something before we leave tonight, some, late, some recent satellite photographs that really bear this out, and the scale. That these, that these sheet floods would have been taking. But the point is something had to have introduced the energy initially into the system. Now can we theorize from that and can we say well it was a bolide, it was an asteroid or a comet and we've solved it and there's no more question about it, let's move on to the next question. Well of course it's not that simple, nothing in science ever is. Um, all we can say for sure at this point is something very, very extraordinary happened. And by default, it, it was almost certainly something extraterrestrial. But beyond that, what was it? We get into the realm of speculation. Now, a couple of years ago, the finding of the black mat. Have I shown you pictures of the black mat? Okay, good. I've got some to show you tonight. The black mat. The discovery of the black mat is so profoundly significant in, 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 in promoting a, a major paradigm shift about our Earth that it should be something that they're talking about, you know, it should be a major topic of discussion, but it isn't. I mean, basically, it, it, it's the evidence that, some, that the, our whole planet was engulfed in some kind of an extraterrestrial event 12,000 years ago. And what was it? I mean, it, it, it couldn't, it, see, and it's too complicated to be explained by a single impact. So then that leaves multiple impacts. But was it multiple impacts? Again, we don't know for sure, but we know that the largest loss of species uh, in five million years occurred right at that same time. So, and, but, and then we're also confronted with the fact that the dominant theory for the disappearance of those species was for the last half century has been us. In all of the credible, so-called credible scientific explanations, we humans decapitated the food chain 12,000 years ago. And so that has allowed getting around the fact that, no, it's something else. Something else caused the decapitation of the food chain at the same time the ice underwent this catastrophic meltdown. At the same time, the climate went through a total spasm from full glacial cold to interglacial warmth, back to glacial cold, and back to glacial warmth, just like that. And, if, and, and that that climate change, how does that correlate with the melting? Well, that's waiting for the new generation of, of Earth scientists and space scientists to look at. Because there is no, we don't have the answer to it yet. That's my point. We've, we've confronted the reality that something extraordinary has happened to the planet and it's ha probably happened multiple times and that in between these intervals of these events whatever they are we've managed to create 
temporary manifestations of civilization. 